Hello again, or hello for the first time. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. Today I'm going to be talking about journaling and journals. Two different things, obviously. One's a verb, one's a noun. And in case you have forgotten your grade school grammar, a noun is a person, place, or thing, and a verb is an action word. So journaling is something that you do, a journal is something you have, and in my case, I have rather a lot of them. There are so many different ways you can use a journal. So today I'm going to be talking about several different kinds of journals and showing you a whole bunch of mine, plus also a lot of reasons why you should or could or would might want to journal. And let's get started. This delicious pile is a gathering of my journals. And I didn't realize how many I had going until I started rounding them up. But everyone has a slightly different purpose. And I think it's a good way to um, kind of keep things separate. But you don't have to. One journal, if you wanted, could do everything that I'm going to talk about. And it's totally up to you. So to begin with, I'm just going to kind of go through through them one at a time and what I use them for. and just some details. Now this one, this one was a gift from my daughter who tends to give me journals for gifts. This is the the latest one that she's given me. I think it came from Mother's Day or something like that. And this is a called a travel journal size. And a, the cool thing about this kind is that you can you can some well this one is actually uh, bound in, but um, I'll show you another one in a little bit that you can actually add more to and take these inside booklets out of. I love this and I haven't even started using it yet, possibly because I have so many others on the go. I think I just haven't figured out exactly what I want to use it for. So there's that. And this one was also a gift from her. And I had it around for a long time and just never used it because sometimes I just, you know, I'm not an avid journaler, journalist. I don't journal every day all the time for a specific purpose or things like that. So that's why my books have different purposes. This one actually has room for a pen, which is nice. Um, this one I decided to use as a commonplace book, which I began in May this year, 2023. And what I'm using it for is just quotes. And sometimes I put the date, sometimes I don't. I've, but a lot of these things come from books or maybe videos or something that just stands out to me. So, for example, I'm reading a book right now about how to change your thinking when what you're doing and how you're thinking and what you believe isn't working anymore. The book is called Read This or Die by Ray Edwards and I've, I've gotten so much out of it. But now I know this is a place where I keep those thoughts that I want to go back and go, oh yes, this is something that is kind of life-changing for me. This one is most mostly like it has 2006 here. It's mostly about Bible studies and sermon notes and things like that. And then I put it away somewhere and then it got pushed somewhere else. And then I found it again recently and it's a really kind of a heavy hardcover, but I'm going to start using it again. This one I got on sale, obviously. I started using this one to use with Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. And so I thought, well, I'll buy a new book. And this has a hard cover, which makes it nice because you can sit and you don't need a desk or anything. And what I've found is it's so useful because when I really need to think through something, then I will, I will sit down and write pages like this. I've already used about half of the book. And I use it for uh, thinking through business plans or future ideas or sometimes just thinking about what's going on. And I'm going to go into a little more depth on some different things like that. You've probably seen this one before if you've been watching my videos for any length of time. This I've used as an art journal and it's a little bit different from a sketchbook. But I wanted to try some things and see how the paper would respond. So this is a journal, but it's not the same as journaling, if you know what I mean, because we think of journaling as as writing. 
in this, I'm just expressing myself and trying things in visual mediums. And like, for example, this is abstract watercolor. I wanted to try some different patterns. But what I found with this is that it doesn't really like to be thickened because it's starting to pull away from the binding. So I think what I might do instead is just from maybe from now on, not use any glue or paint in it and instead just use ink and a pen and write in it and sketch or things like that or whatever I feel like at the time really. But it's a beautiful book and I love the paper. In fact, when I first got it, I didn't want to start at the front. So I started at the back. Yeah, I wanted to try some some acrylic paint and, you know, just try something out and that's what I painted and then it's in the back. Now we get into some different ones. So this one, as you know, we've been working on or I've been working on for some time. It's it's a glue book journal. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about the junk journal. Now, I've done several videos on junk journaling or junk journals, not so much junk journaling. And the idea for a junk journal is that you, you can use all kinds of scraps and things like that. And for example, this is paper that I soaked in watercolor, like really watered down watercolor in blue so that I could get this crinkly look and then and get the blue on it. This is obviously a greeting card that I've used as a page. And some of the pages I just did as glue book pages, but I also have things that are more for journaling, like these. So here's a little patch I could write on if I wanted to. Same here with the back of the butterfly. And the, these kind of pages can be just left as they are, and you can use them for writing on. This you'd have to put a pocket or something on it so that it's it's writable. Obviously I'm not finished this book, but there's just so many different things you can do. And this, I think there's a pocket in here somewhere. This is just a, a collage page, but it's still a journal. And here you could write on that. Here's another journaling spot. I made this little booklet that can you can write on and then pop it in here. And by the way, these um, all these images are my design and I put them in my shop at Summer Bay Studio. So I'll put a link below for it. Um, here's another little pocket. This one has a scripture on the front and a little a thought on the back. So this kind of journal can go in so many different ways. And if you like using pictures, if you like using stickers and glue, the wax seals, why not? Just go ahead and do it. So that's a little overview of that junk journal. And I have another one here, which I'll just quickly flip through. This one has, I think, more places to write. So in this case, I could write on here, hide it away in there, but I, I could also write all over here. And again, I've got a little folder, not just one piece, in a pocket in here where if I wanted to hide things, I could. Here's another example of that. Little places where you can write and tuck them inside. So if you wanted to use it for for like a gratitude journal or uh, a, a gift, you know, each one you could write a message to the person who is to receive it. This is highly decorative, as you can see. But again, it leaves spaces to write, which is really fun. And this one I put lines and there's even, this came from an agenda uh, for new, for artists basically, new artists, new projects and ideas. So this is the fun thing about a junk journal. You can make it just using printables and, um, you know, just, for example, if you go to my store at Summer Bay Studio, you'll, you'll see printable things that you can just download and then you can cut them out. And if you've got a Cricut machine, they're all made so that you can use a Cricut or a Silhouette or one of those cutting machines. But you don't have to have one. You can just fussy cut around them, which is really fun. 
anyway, and relaxing. And, you know, if you're sitting watching TV in the winter or whatever, that's a fun thing to do. So there's that little journal as well. Now we get into a little bit different kind. First, there's this one. I did a, a video on this just, a, just recently. This is a tiny sketchbook, basically, that I found at Michael's one day. And so I, I wanted to just use it as kind of a mini glue book. And I'm using stickers and little sketches and uh, rub-ons and things like that just to decorate the pages. And this is what I call just a personal, kind of a personal glue book, art book, art journal, whatever. And I'm making it up as I go along and just decorating the pages. See, this is a little sketch that I did. I drew the lines around here. But, and then for this I used one of these brushes and um, some Distress ink and just put that blue background on there, which I think is really effective. Some other pages here. Some are stamps. And then these ones, um, the book that I'm reading, that one I mentioned earlier, he challenged himself when he got a bad disease, how he was going to react to it. and. I examined his beliefs and I, it really kind of grabbed me. So I, I put, what if I had a different thought? What if I examined my assumptions? Those are just some things that I've been thinking about. And I love this size of this little journal that I can just write a sentence. So there's that one. Now, another way to have a journal is with a sketchbook. And this is a little artist sketchbook. It's got the place for the pen, which I like this kind of black pen. Got a couple of different ones here. There's a Sharpie and a Micron pen. And this one's a Sharpie as well. What I did with this is these are just tiny sketches. They're sort of practice. So just a little ink sketch and I paint and I draw drew it in ink and then I used markers like this to add the color. I usually just use the one side. But I could also use this at the same time and write things if I wanted to write. But in the meantime, I've just, you know, sometimes just sat, like if I've had to wait when I'm in the car or something, have to wait for a while, then I'll just do some sketches of things that I see from where I am. And like this is the garden shed in my yard, for example. If I wanted to turn this into a journal where I write a lot, I could. I could make notes and say, you know, like this is freehand. I wasn't looking at anything. I just wanted to sketch something but I could make a note of that. I think this I was looking at the flowers in my front yard. Another nice thing about these little ones is the elastic that holds them together. And speaking of which, there's also this kind which has its own uh, thing and elastic and a place for a pen. This one is a watercolor journal. My daughter and I went to Rome in 2019. We both took art supplies because we said, okay, this time, like we travel, we like to travel together. This time we're actually going to record the trip and do the journal while we're there. So we got off to a great start and we would work on it in the evening after we'd, you know, we'd go out and have dinner and then come back and we used that time to work in our little journals. And then we found that we were kind of pooped <laughs> by the time we got home. However, I just did this. Day one, we arrived into Fiumicino Airport on air transit flight, blah, blah, blah. And where we, where we stayed. And then we went, our, the first place we went that evening was to a little street cafe where there was night blooming jasmine right, right beside us. And this, the scent was so strong. It, I said, night blooming jasmine scents the evening air as it tumbles over ancient stone walls. And then I had this salad with tomato bocconcini rocket salad. So I just did a little tiny watercolor of that. Day two, we went to the Galleria Borghese. And that's one of the marble statues. And then I collected things like this. And this was a ticket to something. I think it's the ticket to this. That's why it's on this page. And then we went through the park, the Borghese Gardens. And uh, I did a tree another ticket from the same place and then day three and the date and just some some sketches and a little bit of description some tickets just this is a little drawing of a necklace that I bought and then I like here this is just a tiny sketch with a little bit of watercolor 
and I used a little travel watercolor set like this. In fact, I think this was the one that I took because when I was there, I wanted more colors. So I found an art store and I bought a bunch of more colors. These ones came with, but I added these ones because I needed more colors. And I took one small brush. However, what happened was by about day four, we were finding that we wanted to come back to our hotel and then read our guidebooks and figure out where to go next. However, I also had this little journal. I just made quick notes about what day it was, the date, the day of the week, and where we went. For each day, I kept track of what we did so that when I came home, I could actually go through it and and finish this book, which sad to say I haven't done yet, but I still could because I have all the materials that I need for it. And I kept all the pieces that go with it. So I've got here postcards and maps and tickets and all kinds of little things that I picked up so I can actually finish the book. When I'll do it, I don't really know. Here's another journal that I use. This one is my own design. You can find these on Amazon. So this is uh, the cover is from my watercolors. There's my name, copyright. And I use this kind of journal, which I designed with, with wider lines. I use it to make notes for things that I want to think about and talk about in my videos. And so that's very handy. And then this is another little one I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And this one, when I learn something new on the computer, I write it down. So I've got like video process, what to do if my computer gets stuck. So I don't have to keep relearning how to reformat an SD card, how to use different commands in my graphics program, all kinds of things like that. So it helps me to keep things organized. Now, I also have a planner. I use the Happy Planner. I'm not going to show you that because you can just look them up and that's always fun. Okay, now this one is, like I said, the travel journal style and they come in a folder like this. So I have a couple of the books that go in these and you can put as many as you want in, in there because it just gets fatter. So when, once I'm finished this, I'll put it back in here. How they work is the elastics go through the center of these books. Now, it's a little bit tangled up and I forget exactly. Okay, here we go. So I could put this one in here. So if I wanted to use one for sketching, for example, like that one, and this one for recording my trip or whatever, there is a special way, but I can't remember. Okay, and then this goes around it and there's lots of room. So I could, I could really have all kinds of fat stuff in there. And it gives you a place to have all kinds of journaling in one spot. I promised that I would talk about some different reasons to journal. And I wrote my notes down in, surprise, surprise, another journal. I love these little notebooks that you can put different things in different ones. So I'm going to just go over these ideas and just flip through some pages in here. Now, when I started this one, I was thinking of journaling. I thought, okay, I'll do some sketching. I'll do some whatever, some watercolor. This isn't very good paper for watercolor. It's not... It's just not watercolor paper. But I did quite a bit of writing at first. Just like, here's a list. Plant the bedding plants, do the ironing, write a blog post, clean the bathroom, pick up mail. And then I wrote things like this, which is nothing is as real as a dream. The world can change around you, but your dream will not. That's just inspirational for me. And laugh about as many things as possible in life. This is what it started out as. And then I found I wanted to just decorate it. Yeah, because probably because I had so many other books on the go, I turned it into more of a glue book. So as far as reasons to journal, you can journal for clarity, a mind dump, which is often what I do with this big book. It's like I need to think this through. So sometimes what I'll do is um, a brain dump and just write and write and think through what I want to just to clarify what my thinking is. So that's one reason. You can journal to think differently. So like the comments I made in this little book, if I went, okay, what if I thought differently? What if I thought a different thought about such and such? What would that look like? 
I could just write out different ways that would change my life or change my um, take on something. There's lots of different things that could work for that. You could do daily reflections. For example, what excited me today? What made me feel drained? What did I learn? What new ideas have I had? At the end of the day, you might go, okay, today, if you like to have kind of a list to follow, that's a nice way to do it because then you can go, okay, well, today I learned you know, how to bake a ham. You can also use a journal for when things happen. And that's actually a really good idea because you can look at what way did this change my life? It can be when bad things happen or to just process through the emotions or when good things happen and do the same. Also, ask yourself how it's going to change your life. Is it good or bad? Is it temporary or permanent? And what meaning can I apply to it? You can use a journal for when you have anxiety. And I don't mean rehearse tragedy because that never really helps a lot, I don't think. But sometimes you could go, okay, what's the worst that can happen? And what's the best that can happen? How could this be different? Or just to calm yourself so that you don't get more worked up in the anxiety. If you tend to have anxiety as a problem, or you tend to sort of lean towards being anxious, often writing things down, especially if you're if you're also doing something like this, where you're working on something, you could have this over to the side, be working on this and go, okay, I'm thinking about this, or put them both together so that the writing and the images are in the same place. So what if I had a different thought? Um, maybe I'll have tea. You can use your journal for direction and planning, which is something I use this one for a lot and I have another one that's really business focused and it's a big hardcover one as well. It's like, okay, I need to do the pros and cons on whether I should do this or do that or I'm feeling like this. What happens if I do this or this with my business? What's the return on investment in time and money and that sort of thing? Direction and planning. You can use it for decision making to define problems and brainstorm solutions. So I could go, okay, I'm planning to do this, but I've tried this. It's not working out how I wanted to. What am I going to do now? What's another solution to this problem? And you can use it to define the problem and brainstorm solutions. So you could go, okay, here's the problem. I'm having difficulty with whatever. What are 20 ways that I could solve this problem? And I find that writing 20 ways is really helpful. Usually you run out of ideas by about three or five or whatever. And then if you force yourself to carry on, no matter how ridiculous a solution might be, then you would discover how creative your mind is and what can really happen. For example, I could say, okay, I want to be a full-time artist. I want to be able to paint every day. I need a studio space. What are 20 ways that I could make that happen? And just see what comes up. It's brilliant. And you can use your journal for your dreams. I think writing them down is a great way to turn them into goals and plans. I know a lady here in the town where I live, she said she really, really wants to go to Paris. Well, I don't think the family is hurting for money and I'm not sure why she doesn't just buy a ticket and go. However, it's not my problem. If I really wanted to go to Paris or wherever, I could say, uh, okay, this is my dream. This is what I really want. What are 20 ways that I can get it? If you wanted to, for example, write a book, what, what are you going to do? You have to start somewhere. You have to figure out how it's done. If you want to learn to be a watercolor painter, what are you going to do? So these are dreams that don't have to make sense. If you wanted to ride a camel across the Sahara, it might not make sense to somebody else, but it doesn't have to. It's your dream. Those are really important. And the final thing to think about, this is to do more with your dreams, is what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? That really helps to kind of open up the gates for the truth to come out. That's a little brief trip through the idea of journaling. I think if you do it now, you might really enjoy it, but choose the way that works for you. And I hope you've enjoyed this and got some inspiration out of it. Please have a look at one of these videos. I think they're worth your time and I think you'll probably enjoy and get some inspiration and maybe a little wisdom to apply to your life. And I'll see you next time.